to the second group one at Leopardstown on uh, on Saturday, and it's another cracker, the Kipco Irish Champion Stakes. Look, we've got Roaring Lion here. It absolutely makes this race, doesn't he? Yeah, it's not it's not a great renewal in, in some respects, you know, because when, when you think of this race, as even though we've English and French horses and we've Irish horses, there's kind of a lack of maybe a generation kind of clash that's uh, maybe a lack of fillies against Colts. So that, I love this race when it brings milers against mile and a half horses, three-year-olds against older horses, and fillies against colts. This is more of a clash of two of the better three-year-olds. And um, Roaring Lion, in fairness, uh, he was being brilliant. He's, he's, <coughs> his last performance was pretty exemplary. But I, I just think Saxon Warrior, you know, there's nothing between them really in the eclipse. And Saxon Warrior should, should be much, much better now than he was. Even then, when he was running two group ones in, in a week, which never happens, um, I think he'll be a lot better shape now than he was last time because Aiden's horse to come back to form at the prices I'd have him each way rather than back in Roaring Lion even though Roaring Lion should win he's gone into 11-4 to four now Saxon Warrior you're still getting mm. like more than 1-1.5 1 1 yeah. that he's in the first three like so um, yeah. I'm happy with that with guaranteed odds like I think he'll give him a, he'll give him a run for his money can you see beyond Roaring Lion is there anything further down maybe study man or N not really I, I take Johnny's point about the Eclipse uh, purely on the Eclipse run S Saxon has to be the bet but it just seems like Roaring Lion has improved every single run this season yeah. he's, he's become a really straightforward horse yeah now. he's he's grown up so it's much over the course of four runs right in there as well yeah Line. but so. it's more it's more it's, it's more how mm. he's matured mentally like he looked Earlier like I mean he looked yeah. like when he was a two year old like last year when he got beaten tongue, like when yeah. he got beaten in the Racing Post Trophy last yeah. year and yeah. it was like oh no he could be good but but I mean he's Inside out from just that. the way he travels in his races as well, and I, I think the mile and two for Saxon Warrior will will be more or less the optimum trip for him. Um, Back to a mile, but do you not think he needs a no. mile still? The mile and two will be absolutely. Right. I think that'll be next to perfect. I don't mm. think he quite gets a mile and a half, but um, the only thing about these races, Aiden has a good tactical edge on the Raiders here. Like it's kind of like the Dubs taking on someone in Crow Park. They do they do get a few points advantage, like and and Aiden will remember him taking on See the Stars here and trying everything to get a beat with Fame and Glory. Roaring Lion probably yeah. isn't see the stars. Watch um, that again yesterday. Fame and yeah. Glory in Mass across on second and third. Ah. Ambulance for it. Just like, and what, he still what, what what he can't it up. But uh, that tactical edge, do some people fall into the trap of assuming Barry Doyle are just going to go off a million at the start and they get, they, they get kind of tricked by it. But then, as well, we've seen over the course of the year so far, indeed. Barry Doyle have put on slow early pace in lots of these races. I think it's possibly, possibly Dawville. Well, I'm, I'm certainly yeah, thinking about the Irish Derby and yeah, SDS, exactly, yeah. who it was just uh, it, it, it was just a voodoo trick mm -hmm. on him. I mean, he had a horse who, there's not much you can do if you have a horse who's very straightforward and a jockey who knows how fast you should be going. And the SDS, who is a very good jockey, just somehow got it into his head, oh, I'm in front here on a horse who likes to make the running and is travelling away fine, but oh, I shouldn't be in front because Bally Doyle here. So Bally Doyle didn't know what they were going to do. Yeah. But he knows that we know that they know. Just forget all this stuff. The line is a very straightforward horse. You can position him anywhere you want in the race and there's not much they can do. That, that, that's the point. It's not really going to make an awful lot of difference in no. fairness because he... A strongly one mile and a half will just make him travel away. He has plenty of toe, like so. It's not like they're trying to expose some chink in him, but they'll run it to suit Saxon Mori or whatever that may be. And I'm intrigued as to who tracks who of the pair. Yeah, so that, that that's like to see the star sort of fame and glory thing when they did a bit of a, yeah. a you know, a, a flip of tactics. But that's why racing is more fascinating than people understand. There'll be a lot going on here before the race. Even yeah, gets. absolutely. Mm. The, the opening six furlongs are going to be more interesting mm. than the, the closing mm. four. Just great to see, to see the way. French horse as well. Like that's. He's a bit of an unknown by deep yeah. impact and um, probably not good. He'll love a slow early pace, anyway. Yeah. <laughs>